This is the fifth video for Someone Like You by Adele, part of the Trinity Grade 3. In the last video, I've been looking just at the second page of the piece and referring a lot to the music, so hopefully you're also working from the music at home. It is possible to learn exactly what I've played without any music at all, but I would absolutely urge you, especially if you're going to be doing it for the exam, to work with your music, and I will keep referring to where we are in things. So in the last video, we were looking at the melody. what you're expecting isn't it so now we're going to look at the left hand part that goes under this and I just want to in focus entirely just now on the le left hand and the patterns that we're going to be using you'll need your pencil handy as well uh, we're going to be using some pedal as well as we go along basically we're pedaling once a bar all the way to the end it says it gives you one bar of pedal the little up down mark and then it says sim which means similar so that means you're going to pedal like that right to the end up and including the last bar so basically every time you've got roughly one chord per bar and each time that chord changes, that harmony changes, you need to re-pedal. Now down the bottom, we're going to go, we've got a rhythm that goes crotch it, minim, crotch it, crotch it, minim, crotch it, crotch it, minim, crotch it, crotch it, crotch it, minim. So whenever it's a minim, the white one, it's going to be longer. Also, down the bottom, it's very tempting to go up to your thumb, but you might like to go up to your second because on the next line, you're going to be doing that and adding an extra note. So it's not essential. You could use your thumb, but why not use the second now because then it gets you ready for what you're going to be doing on the next line. So first of all, we have like a little descending bass line. We're going from, a uh, bottom line is A. Uh, I don't know which, uh, how you do your left hand notes, but I do the spaces as all cows eat grass, all A, down there. Then it goes down one to G, granny's boots don't fit anymore, G sharp. Yeah, there's that note. Then we're coming down another note, that's also sharp, F sharp. And then I'm bringing my little finger up to D. So I'm deliberately just picking out the first note of each line, just so I get used to where the hands are going. So I've got an A with my little finger. Then I'm moving it to G sharp, then down to F sharp. And then I can see it, the whole thing moves up and there is a five to remind you to do that. Let's add another note. Now on that first bar, that A goes up to an E, which you hold and repeat. So that's basically what you've got. Then you go G sharp, but still going up to that E. Then down to F sharp, going up to C sharp. Repeat the C sharp. Move your hand up and you're going to go D, A and a high D. Okay, I'm going to do it again. One, two, three, four. A up to E with a two if you can. G sharp up to an E, repeat. F sharp up to C, repeat the note. Move your hand up, D, A, thumb on D. Now, uh, by all means, pause the, pause the video. Go back, try that again, or if you're happy, just carry on with me now. At the end of each line, I would suggest that you consolidate and go back and do it a few times before you move on. I'm showing now the next line, which is bar 21 to bar 24. Now, the bass line is going to have some similarities. It's going to go A. I'll just play the other notes. G sharp again, we have that. The F sharp again. We also have the D, but now it's going to be on your third finger. Right, let's fill in the rest. I'm going to go A up to the E like we did before, but then straight up to your thumb on A and back to E. See the pattern there? So it's going little finger to thumb to. Then on the next bar, C sharp up to the E again, and then a G sharp there, back to the E. Then an F sharp at the bottom, then a C sharp up to an F sharp. And we're going to start walking down a scale. Then it's E which will lead you to D with a three. It's got a three written under it. Then the same note played with your second finger, walking down C sharp, B, and that's getting you back to A for the next line. Let's do that line again. So I'm just gonna play it slowly, just talk it through. So from 21, three, four, A, E, high A, back to E, G sharp, E, G sharp, E, down to F sharp, now a C sharp. F sharp, walking down, a D, another D on a different finger, walking down. Okay, and that brings us up, stop there on the first note. So again, if you need to, 
pause, go back, um, and then when you're ready, carry on with the video. I'm going to show you the next line. Bar 25. Now, it's the same notes that we were using before. In the previous bar, we were doing all crotchets, one beat notes. So you go one, one, one. But the difference now is you're going to go quavers, one, one, one. So it's going to give you something slightly different. You're going to get back to that A. See how it works? Quaver, so it's one and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. And we're going to use that rhythm all the way up to the last bar when it goes back to crotchet, crotchet, minute. So you got that for the first one, and then G sharp. So similar notes. But I suppose the difference is you're getting back down to the note you start on. So you got A, E, A, E, A, G sharp, E, G sharp, E, back to the G sharp, F sharp. Now, it is D, but we're not going to go up to it. We're going to drop down to D, and you're going to go D, A, D. Here it is once more for 25, 3, 4, A. G sharp, E, G sharp, E, F sharp. Low D, A, D, and pause, because it's for two. Again, pause the video, go back. Do as much as you need, okay, before moving on. Bar 29. Things are going to change slightly here. We're going to start A, E, A, okay. So it's, it's, got, it's got something in common with the two previous lines, but the rhythm's different. So it's crotchet, crotchet, minim. But we're actually going to go to a different chord now. We're going to go up to an E chord. E, E, E. Then we are going to go to F sharp, but we're going to be going up rather than down to it. And then I'm dropping to D. Now I think I'm right in saying each of those had the same shape. If I'm playing them as chords, just to show you the shape of it. So what we got, we got a bass note, then a fifth above it with your second finger, and then what we call the octave. Okay, so that's your basic shape. So bar 29, you go A, E, A, and you hold it. Then you come up to E position, E, B, E. Now these are going to be all sharps. F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, down to D, D, A, D. I think that's fairly straightforward, just as well, because the right hand's quite fiddly there. Last line, we're going to do some chords now. So bar 33, it is the A and E. I mean, they've written one and four. I don't think it's going to be the end of the world if we do one and five and then do that. It's up to you. But whatever you do, play an A and an E. Okay, so I'll do the fingering here. One and four. Then I'm going to use my little finger on the G sharp, keeping the E over it. Now the third bar along, three bars in the end. F sharp at the bottom. Nice chord. And then I'm dropping down and I'm going to go D. A, D, but I've got an F sharp. How on earth am I going to do that? Well, I could just do that. And then drop down A and C sharp. I'll do that again. So here's the last line. So you've got your four there, your thumb there. So three, four. So that's one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. And that's all your left hand part. So lots of work on that. You might even like to just pop the recording on and see what fits. Just go to the bit where she starts singing the chorus. The da 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 da. You should find it will fit pretty closely with it. There might be some little changes in there, but it's always interesting just to see what's going on. Finally, just to mention the pedaling, one pedal of bar again. And I'm using what we call overlapping pedaling which means you don't go. There's a tendency for people to get to the end of the bar and lift the note and the foot at the same time, but the idea is the foot stays on. So the foot's on. Now I'm going to start, you notice it's all ringing, nothing going. I play the next note and then I re-pedal and eventually it just becomes seamless. But 
what you're doing is you're refreshing the pedal, you're allowing the new chord to come through, but without a gap in between. Uh, something to think about. It's a, it's a, a tricky skill that most pianists have to start really developing around grade three. So now's a really good time to be thinking about that.